my mind is blown. Seriously, like V-Raptor is my dream camera. And this new push in sensor technology coupled with a small form factor is changing my mind about what I thought was possible in a camera this size, straight up. And this is the first entrant into the DSMC3 ecosystem. And that means that you're getting all the benefits of our sensor learning from DSMC1 and DSMC2, coupled with Komodo's great form factor ideas and UI, and they're getting married together with our usual flair. So let's start to talk about some specs. Okay, here we go. This is a brand new 8K VV or full frame sensor with a built-in PDAF that shoots a whopping 120 frames per second full sensor 8K. It boasts over 17 stops of DR. It's insane. And this is a true multi-format sensor. And you're gonna wanna stay tuned for the red tech about that. 6K is a perfect S35 crop. It unlocks 200 frames per second. 3K gives you a crop that's the same as Super 16 and it unlocks 400 frames per second. And you can use the LUTs that come preloaded. You can add more, create presets, and customize the side UI. Yeah, I said side UI. Let's check out how this thing works. You have eight quick keys here, as well as four navigation buttons on the side. Using the up and down arrows, you can scroll through different pages and even customize your own. Each button becomes a little labeled portal to the exact menu you need. This thing is easy to use and makes for a super functional AC side of the camera. I mean, really, the whole form factor is pretty sick. And you should keep an eye out for the new accessories that the DSMC3 ecosystem is gonna offer. Starting at the front, we have the RF mount with a locking ring and that offers tons of flexibility and great lens choices. You also have quarter 20 mounting points and the front record button is back. Like we saw, the right or AC side of the camera has the UI and power and record switches. The back of the camera, it has a micro V-lock and a pretty rad IO array, but we'll get to that. Just a little FYI, micro V-lock is a bit smaller than standard V-lock. So if you have an old red brick, that's not gonna work on there. We do, however, have an adapter that goes from micro V-Lock to standard V-Lock if you need. Digging into the I.O., you have your wireless antenna here and a super useful USB-C port that folds in all the functionality of a Komodo link, like FTPS transfers, low latency phone or tablet monitoring, and camera control. You have two independent 4K capable 12G SDI ports labeled one and two. You can mirror them in 4K, or you can use them separately as 1080 feeds and customize each with a separate look and color space in the menu. You also have a five pin phantom power capable audio input. Headphone jack, it has the same six pin power connector as DSMC2, and this little EXT port, just like the Komodo. That's gonna get you connection for timecode, control, and sync, things like that. The left side of the camera has a micro V-lock eject button and the media bay plus some sweet brain. Media is another cool topic. V-Raptor uses CF Express cards because the read-write speeds are so damn fast. You're still capturing raw R3Ds just like you always were, just way, way faster. Red code is also now even better, and all because of these improved read-write speeds. Another big upgrade is here in the top pogo pad. You actually have power now, so you can directly mount the new monitor to the body. Seriously? You know what? I'm hooked. This crams so many special needs into one little body with the same image quality that you've come to expect from a red flagship sensor. It's got the highest frame rates, 8K VistaVision sensor, it's got the largest amount of dynamic range, plus it's got IO flexibility, and it's in this shockingly small form factor that at this point we've come to expect, right? V-Raptor is the pinnacle of camera technology in my opinion, and I cannot wait to see what you guys shoot with it. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, post, and subscribe, and go create something.